Nobody likes waking up and feeling like crap, huh? But with Ghostbed, you don't need to worry about that at all. At Ghostbed, you'll find Made in the USA mattresses with premium materials and backed by 20 to 25-year warranties. Plus, take 101 nights to break it in with their sleep trial. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com slash LEWIS for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. This could could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Hello there and welcome to the 126th edition of Lewis Black's Rantcast entitled 5223, and I'll get to explaining uh, the reason for that title. But first, I want to say that uh, the um, the Rantcast today is uh, uh, dedicated to the memory of uh, my friend and a mentor and a colleague, a word I've uh, rarely used, but uh, he truly was, uh, Mark Russell, uh, one of uh, truly a, a you know one of those really exceptional uh, political satirists, and uh, who uh, I had the joy of seeing when I was younger. And even though at the time I really wasn't planning to go into comedy, I believe he had an effect on me and I and the way in which I looked at things, and certainly on my sense of humor. Uh, he had a wit and a charm that I lacked. I still lack, uh, but was really uh, uh, part of his fiber as a comedian and um, really made his work uh, exceptional because uh, he sat there at a piano and uh, kind of nailed out these tunes and um, they uh, and, and a commentary about what was happening. Uh, there in Washington, D.C., just blocks away from the Shoreham Hotel where I saw him. And uh, he uh, would have um, members of Congress show up, uh, and um, they would uh, take their abuse from him, and it was doled out in this very kind of whimsical and impish, with this impish grin on his face. He was much like uh, Tom Lehrer. The two of them kind of were... Uh, it's, you know, uh, there's a kind of a, you can see that there's a similarity in the way they approach the, 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 the kind of satire that they did. I think that, um, Tom Lear's more of a social satirist. Uh, Mark was really, a, a political satirist along the lines of, uh, who he's been compared to, um, uh, Will Rogers, uh, both of them, uh, they are, you know, we, we constantly hear, you know, that uh, it was so even handed that their, their criticism that, uh, and, the, and their charm, really, that it, it wasn't, uh, they, they, people seem to not notice just how vicious they both were by being that charming. Because what they were doing was bludgeoning the fact that both sides were inordinately, uh, you know, uh, appalling. And, uh, well, pieces of shit, as I've said from time to time. And, uh, but they did it in such a sweet way. It was, as I've, as I've said a few times since he passed about him, that he, uh, it was, uh, Mark uh, went after these, uh, these politicians and he paper cut the shit out of them until he had uh, truly nailed them. And uh, I was lucky enough to spend time with him uh, later in his life, and uh, up at uh, Chautauqua, I met him through the National Comedy Center, and he spent time in, in Chautauqua. He spent his time, his summers there, and it was really uh, a pleasure to uh, to uh, sit with him on the porch, porch there and uh, watch him go off on uh, what was happening now. He did not lose a, 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 any of his kind of... Uh, God, the, that uh, whip-like mind he had. He, he didn't lose a beat. Uh, and even last summer, uh, as I believe he was in uh, remission, um, he still could um, he could sit down at the piano and still get it out there. Uh, uh, not only for about 
things that were going on now, but things that had happened, songs that he had written 20 or 30 years ago. And if you really want to give your kids an a interesting way to look at political history uh, is to go back and uh, look at, uh, show them the, the many videos that uh, one can find on YouTube. Um, he, uh, his, uh, he did a, uh, shows bi-monthly for uh, the uh, PBS and sh- shot them out of Buffalo where he was from. And uh, it's, a, it's a really great way to learn history and just how, how d- dumb many of our leaders in Congress, congressional folks have been. Uh, and, you know, because he was sitting there during Watergate at that piano and uh, just, uh, you know, firing his missiles out there and, uh, and, just, and blowing up the targets. And certainly there were many and still are. Uh, and it is uh, his loss is a tragedy. Uh, but uh, his legacy is uh, a gift. So thank you, Mark. And I'm sad, saddened by your leaving. But uh, I guess you felt enough was enough. Um, and so uh, the reason we call this uh, uh, Randcast 5223 is because uh, I will announce right now that on May 2nd, that's right, of this year, to 2023, 2023, we will be uh, uh, premiering the uh, my special Tragically, I need you on YouTube. Uh, it, you can catch it for free. Uh, more information will be coming. We're going to be pounding you with it. I promise you, pounding you with it. We're going to, they keep talking about how we're going to herd everybody over to YouTube and people will be watching on YouTube and just going to round you up and uh, yippee i o tie and get you over there. So uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll, you'll have, uh, you know, and also my website will let you know if you don't, lewisblack.com. If for some reason you miss the massive amount of social media that will be blasting out there or all of the podcasts, apparently, that I'm going to be on. Um, so uh, there's no mucking up the uh, one on YouTube with commercials. There may be commercials before it. Uh, and if they want to put them in it, uh, I won't I won't do that. Uh, uh-uh. So I know that, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I hope that maybe if you want to go to the bathroom, you pause it. <laughs> do it that way. Uh, and I hope you all get a chance to watch it as we heard you over, heard you to YouTube. It'll be on my YouTube channel, Lewis Black's YouTube channel. So uh, I hope to see you there. I won't be there, but I, I will be, but I won't be, you know. Uh, it will be the image of me. And I will have a little coffee because I think I got a snap too, because we got a lot of stuff here. And I'd like to get through it quickly. Because uh, there's, um, it's, well, it starts with good news, actually. We're going back to the moon. I forgot to mention this last week. And uh, it's important to note um, that we are sending, uh, it's four of them are going up. Uh, and we've had, a woman will be involved, will be going up this time. One great, one giant step again. And a Canadian, a super giant step, I guess, being brought along uh, to make sure that there is, uh, People, the Americans don't beat each other up. Uh, we'll send up the, the Canadian who will be very nice and make sure that the, the group is, uh, really behaves itself uh, as the Canadians are want to do that they're, with their, the way in which they have an etiquette about them that we, we lack. And uh, uh, so uh, it's, it's stunning that it's the... 50, it's 50 years after that really is, I found, I went, it was kind of a shock to my system. Uh, I, I don't know why I w- would be. I mean, we just stopped. We did it. We got men to the moon. We got folks out there. Uh, we did what we were supposed to do. The woman should have gone up the next time. Um, that should have been it. We should have continued with that exploration. It is utterly appalling that we didn't. Uh, it was a step back not to do it. We were on our way, and it should have been done. Uh, and it would have helped in a ton of ways in terms of the way I believe that the world looked at us, and it would have kept us out of dealing with doing the kind of bullshit that we did. Um, and it might have kept us uh, 
more involved with the understanding of how great science is. Yeah. I mean, sure, there's mistakes made in science. That's how you learn. That's how we learn fucking anything. Okay? We learn fucking anything through experience. And then we find we made a mistake and we go, oh, we shouldn't do that. And we move on. And uh, it would have been great um, for science, for the world, and for the universe. Well, maybe not the universe (laughs) once they started dealing with us. And it'd be great for these kids now uh, because they... You know, it, it might have been so after 50 years, they might have had a shot at getting the fuck off here if things uh, if things, uh, you know, don't improve in terms of uh, the the climate that we've uh, destroyed on this earth. Have we destroyed it? Yeah, we're doing a good job of destroying it. And hopefully we can save it in time. Uh, one hopes so. One hopes for a miracle, uh, which would mean that uh, there is, you know, uh, intelligence on the intelligent life here that would kind of move things along. But uh, and but we you know you got to wonder about our intelligence because this week uh, the Tennessee or last week or the, the Tennessee legislature uh, expelled three members, two members, um, and uh, and admonished the third, two black men uh, and a woman, a white white woman, as as they would say, uh, as Lenny Bruce would say, um, and. Uh, the, the two black men were expelled from the Tennessee legis- Tennessee state legislature. Why? Well, you know, you, you, they had, um, they protested. And so did the white, white woman. The woman did too. Um, and uh, she'd been, a, I believe, a teacher at one point. And uh, I guess she wanted to teach the folks of that legislature. Uh, and this was in, in response to the shooting. This was all in response to the shooting uh, that took place at the Christian school in Tennessee, beyond belief. So they were protesting. And the reason that the legislature got upset was the protest and the fact that they used bullhorns and they were down in a, a pit or something that they weren't supposed to be in and uh, in on the legislative floor. And they were protesting. Okay, that's it. Nobody was hurt. Um, the people who were in the stands watching, uh, you know, the folks, the stands <laughs> who were watching uh, were protesting, too. And they were protesting outside of the courthouse. And apparently uh, many of the Republican legislators were upset by this, that these, you know, nine and 10 and 12 and 15 year olds were really out of control out there. And but it's just amazing to me. That uh, I mean, this is just the stupidity of it. Okay, um, that, that you don't understand a that these people might um, you know have the right to protest, and b that the, that it comes from a place that they're just fed up. When m- most of us agree on simple kind of common sense, I'm going to say that word has been repeated a billion times. Common sense gun reforms that might help us, like a uh, background checks, background checks background checks so that someone who uh, really shouldn't be given a gun isn't given the gun, doesn't enable to purchase the gun. And maybe someone who's supposed to, who wants to purchase the gun has that moment of three or four days and goes, oh, maybe I shouldn't uh, go across the street and kill my neighbor for, um, for using that, uh, you know, uh, for, for doing, putting up really horrific uh, Christmas decorations or whatever. It's just beyond comprehension at this point that the so the, the, the two of them, that the two black men are expelled. Okay, The white woman was not expelled. And what does that tell you? How simple is that? OK, how tough is that to draw the conclusion that there's nothing? It's they should have expelled all three of them. Two of them were expelled by 66 votes. The white woman was saved by one voter. She only got 65. She was she was allowed to stay. Oh, joy. Uh, the other two were um, kicked out. It's, it's it's beyond belief. And to not see that as somehow uh, has something to do with uh, the, the racial thing is that it's not racist. It, it, it really? What are you kidding me? All they had to do was expel all three of them. And they might have had a shot to just keep it in the realm of like, uh, what are you doing expelling legislators? And uh, it, and it's a fucking, it's democracy. These people were elected, okay? You don't, you know, you don't do that, all right? And one of them pointed out 
that uh, the, the went through all the people who had not been thrown out for really more heinous stuff, including uh, a legislator who actually urinated on the seat of another legislator. And that person wasn't expelled. That's just beyond belief that, that urinating on somebody's seat is a better form of protest than actually uh, verbally protesting. And and Lord knows what he was protesting by urinating on the seat. Uh, I, 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 so now it appears that uh, the um, the um, it, it turns out that the uh, it looks like the local uh, governments will send them back. That's what it appears like. Now we will see, and then we'll see what these idiots do in Tennessee as regards whether they. Uh, allow them to come back and uh, sit sit in their seats or uh, if they'll throw them out again it just it's it's disgusting I mean, it's we're, we're so much better than this and this is so off this is so off the track okay they already it's it, they've got a super majority down there that's more than a majority that's like more 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 majority than is necessary you know, to, to pass whatever they want. So what do they give a shit? You know, these folks can protest all they want and they go, nah, 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 nah. so that and my friend Kathleen Madigan along the lines of, hey, how stupid are we? Uh, the the good folks of the Minnesota, Minnesota, the Missouri, where she's from. God, I hope she doesn't hear this. From the Missouri legislature, uh, from their house, uh, voted this week to... Um, Defund libraries, not police, libraries. Uh, $4.5 million taken out of the budget uh, because the, uh, and this is in retaliation for the librarians um, who were uh, who were basically through the ACLU um, filed a suit about their First Amendment rights uh, because they were being asked uh, to remove, you know, to remove and make sure there were no books that had any sexual content because we're back in 1913. Yes, sir, Bob, or even when in the 20s, I guess, 30s, whenever it was that Ulysses couldn't get into the country because it was considered by, by Ulysses by, um, by James Joyce was considered pornography. This has got to stop. Okay, it's just got to stop now. Now, I have to think is it's a unique way to do it is to defund the library as opposed to saying we're banning books. It's really unique, but that you're also taking away uh, from from people who desperately need it. That library is a place where people who can't afford to buy books and and where they can find the knowledge that they uh, that many of them yearn for. Yeah, they do. They yearn for it. And the kids have the opportunity. It's where I. uh where I was taken, which where my first introduction to books took place was the library. It's, it's one of the great things that we have are our libraries and you're going to defund them. You fucking, you fucking fucks. Now they say that the Senate will defeat this, but it, the fact that they did it, it's just gotta, please stop this. All right. Just stop it. Stop seeing that, you know, all you see, there, there's, you got one group of people who see the forest, another group of people who see just the trees. And uh, it doesn't matter which side, but it really does. It, it really has got to stop because um, trees are what make books. And I have kind of gone off the, the rails here for a second, and I apologize uh, because I think that um, that basically I there's – there is no argument that they can present about defunding a library that will get through to me. Okay. You just don't do it. And you allow people to make the choice to read what they want to read. And you allow adults, parents to come in there. And if their kids want to get a book and that you don't want them reading the book, you're the parent. What do you think? Kids are going to sneak in there to look at, I, you know, please stop it. Okay. You know, if you're so worried about that, then, then it's your responsibility of a parent to watch out for it. You don't take the libraries away from everybody. Whew. Clarence Thomas, too. Uh, the uh, This is out of nowhere. We discover that uh, after years, <laughs> number of years, I guess, that he and his wife, Ginny, uh, were given a $500,000 trip, vacation. This was by a, uh, 
a well-heeled Republican donor. Really? So it's just, and it's, he's supposed to have, uh, you know, told the, whatever the ethics committee is or whatever committee it, uh, uh, oversees this kind of thing. It, but he, it, you know, it, 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 the Supreme court, but he didn't, no, he didn't, did not, didn't no. A, a half a million dollar trip. I mean, I mean, wow, I, that's, you know, and I could probably read you what was, what was the, you know, what he, why it cost a half a million. It's ludicrous. Okay. So that's some vacation. You do that, you know, you tell me you're not going to take it. You're not going to listen to what this guy has to say uh, over dessert. Fuck you. And over a, over a $2,000 dessert, because it's got gold leaf or whatever the fuck, however you get up to a half a million dollars. Whew. Wow. Um, we also have uh, the, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to go into that next time. Uh, Muffa Prestone, Muffa Prestone, the, the uh, apparent, they call it the abortion pill, but in many ways it's the morning after pill. And, uh, but I didn't realize until today, actually, I always thought it was a morning after pill that you could use it up to 70 days. Uh, but they really should refer to it as the morning after pill. And, you know, you know, and uh, really it's, it, it, if there's any sense of that, uh, you know, uh, it's, this is the, a personal choice. It's that pill. The person gets that pill, wants the pill, needs the pill, takes the pill. And uh, the fact that the Republicans are in there trying to bat that pill out of their hands is just more than I can bear. But hopefully I'll get, um, more to discuss with that next week because uh, time to wrap up. Before I go, somehow I miss this. Um, they, there's an elderly Florida man boasted he won his golf club's senior championship despite missing the tournament's first day. <laughs> Donald Trump, that's right, Donald Trump, 76, credited his own strength and stamina for the math defying, math defying victory at the Trump International Golf Club. Wow, he is just, it is, it's astonishing uh, that that's, that, now there's something that should have been on the front page and it should have been um, really the headline. He's cheating at golf, folks. Um, and I continue to hear that he had an agenda and people like his policies. And, and then I hear that people, uh, you know, I'd like to, I would love to know what those policies and agenda were. I really would because I don't quite see it. Okay. He went there to, to uh, clean up the swamp, they say. And, that, uh, and that's what apparently DeSantis will be doing. And, they, and they're already, you know, you know, clustering many of them around DeSantis and don't eat. They've not even seen him yet. I mean, it's like, stop it. And a lot of what he's doing in Florida is just a ludicrous. Another bit of satire. I'm not going to allow Disney. Shut up, Lewis. Let's, let's wrap this up. And uh, so before I go, uh, I, I had the real um, pleasure of uh, once again doing uh, Inside Out to, uh, I did a, a voiceover recordings for them uh, this past Friday and uh I think uh, what I got to see of what they're up to and what they're doing, there's some great new characters and it's, I think they may have nailed it again. I hope so. Uh, they they do. It's, it's just a real, I'm, I'm very lucky to be working with them and it's so, so unique to be able to watch that creative process, uh, especially that one, because it's a brilliant group of fuckers um, who make a great lunch. Also, I hit the road. Also, I hit the road this week. Um, I'll be uh, going to Fort Worth, which I'm really pleased with, uh, to play Bass Hall. And uh, it's uh, an extraordinary venue. And I think um, for those of you who do come out, you're in for a treat because uh, I kind of think I'll hit a, another level there. I did the last time because when you work a room, with the kind of uh, acoustics that that room has, uh, you can't beat it. It really does uh, 
you know, for someone who's, you know, makes his living talking on stage, there's nothing quite like it. And they're 25 years old and it's a very young, um, performing performance space. And they've, they, they hit all the right notes. And, uh, also then on, uh, Sunday, excitedly, I will return to New Orleans at the Fillmore, uh, there. And, um, I look forward to seeing you guys. If you can make it off the streets for a few minutes, you know, just, I know you like to entertain yourselves, but uh, I'm just asking for the option of spending time with you uh, because it, I can't wait. I get a, an extra day there too to wander about. And I look forward to that. It's just a city that uh, has its own magic. And uh, finally, and magic and, and some bars that make me weep and it's Oysterville and, uh, I hope uh, I hope they uh, I hope it's a time you can eat oysters. Is it's not one of those times you're not supposed to. I never remember the dates. I'm too busy scarfing those little fuckers down, and that's what way it is here. As we wrap this 126th edition up, uh, five two twenty three, May second, uh, twenty twenty three. You can take a look at uh, on YouTube for free. Uh, Tragically, I Need You, my newest uh, special. And uh, April 28th on Amazon Prime with uh, uh, Thanks for Risking Your Life. Uh, so hopefully I will see you there. And that'll see you down the road. And I hope you enjoy the rants uh, that you'll be hearing this week from uh, Tunica, Mississippi. October 14th, 2016, we were there. And if they've got something... There's a place where people got something to bitch about. It's Mississippi. So um, sit back and enjoy them. I enjoyed reading them. I really enjoyed spending time with you today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you. Uh, and somewhere down the road, one way or the other, maybe I'll see you on YouTube. Uh, take care of each other. And thank you. Look. There's a lot of stuff that I hate in this world. It's why you listen to this podcast, right? Maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but I know one thing that everybody hates, and that's bad sleep. Name me one person who doesn't hate bad sleep. I mean, maybe you're lying in bed just trying to get to sleep in the first place, or maybe you're a hot sleeper, so you're waking up dripping in sweat. Whew. That's why I'm glad to partner with Ghostbed. They're a family-owned company, and they've been around for 20 years, so they know what they're doing. They just don't slap together mattresses like some of these other companies. They actually take the time to make a high quality made in the USA mattress that's going to help you get the sleep you deserve. And it's going to last. If you're a hot sleeper, you'll want to check out the Ghost Bed Lux, which is dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Try out your mattress for 101 nights with their sleep trial. Shipping is free and most orders ship within 24 hours of checking out. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com slash LEWIS for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. I mean, we can't keep this up for long. Get on it. All right, right now we're going to go live. Yep. What we do every night is, is we, uh, we go, uh, we, we stream around the world, and seriously around the world. And from tonight, those who are watching, uh, I'm standing here in, uh, in a place that you're going to have to try to find it on the map. <laughs> if you have a child and they're taking geography, see just how fucking good they are. <laughs> I'm presently in the, uh, I believe it's the Horseshoe Casino here in Tunica, Mississippi. There, uh... Now, uh, now for those of you out there and thinking, uh, for them, if you're a, like a gambler, somebody who just fucking wants to gamble without any distractions, nothing at all, not a golf course, not a spa, nothing. Just a buffet to refuel and get your fucking ass back out there. This is the place you're going to want to come to. I, I truly believe that I, somewhat, 
like the tail of Paul Bunyan or whatever, you know, somebody who, no, Johnny Appleseed who just threw seeds down. The, these casinos were not built. Um, they were just people, the, the, these were underground. If you come here, literally, it looks like there's nothing but fields. And then these came out of the earth and beckoned the people, and the people came. You'll fly into Memphis, which is a great town. And, and you can, and it's close to, to Tunica, so you can, you can come here three days of it, just three days, get rid of every fucking, get, every dime you've got. And then, and then wander back to Memphis and do, you know, wander the streets with a, you know, trying to, you know, do panhandling. It'll be a fun vacation. Bring the kids. Make sure you've got a splint so one of them looks injured. <laughs> An eye patch is always nice. Uh, why did Bob Dylan win a Nobel Prize for Literature? Cause he's fucking good! That's why. It's not an argument. Fucking unbelievable. It doesn't need to be a book. God damn it, they son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, really, literally, give the Swedes some credit. They're not, they're not the happiest fuckers on earth. Ooh. <laughs> no, that's why. I, I think he's, uh, he's unbelievable. And then they'll give it to Lennon and McCartney at some point. That's what I think this is a setup for. Um, this is the other, oh, this is uh, old folks coughing behind you. Cover your mouth. So uh, that is, uh, those of you who are older, and I'm older, when you cough, you put your hand over your mouth. You gotta remember that. You just go, ha, ah, and then do this, okay? It's a simple gesture. P people around you appreciate it. And you know, and you know, and I know that you're not really sick. It's just your body going, ha, ah, okay. I'm restarting again. Let's kick it back. Oh, God, oh boy. Now I can get to the buffet. This is an, an interesting one. As a fat old woman, how do I get close enough to Trump to grab his package? <laughs> Never crossed my mind. I do wonder what he smells like. I do at times. I wonder, what, what is he, you know, like, does he smell like kind of a like a Tropicana orange juice or something. <laughs> uh, how we are so distracted by all the media bullshit and everyone is neglecting the fact that our debt is fucking trillions with a capital T. Um, here's why. Because um, uh, it, at this point in time, it uh, doesn't fucking matter. We've had debt. We've had a lot of debt throughout my whole life, okay? If you want to get, that's what you want to focus on. Here's why. Um, this Christmas, when you go by the mall parking lot, take a good fuck look at all the people that are in that mall racing in there to buy shit, okay? The people didn't stop driving cars. Shit hasn't ground to a halt, okay? Nothing's changed, you know? The reason we're partly in trillions of dollars of debt was in order, A, so that we could have a war in Iraq and not pay for it, and B, so that we could prop up our fucking asses by investing in a ton of shit in order to kind of make, which was maybe not the smartest thing, I grant you, but it worked, in order to keep the banks going. So that's where the money went. So we gotta live with that problem. And eventually, and especially if Donald is right, we are gonna be able to make a gazillion dollars, and then the debt will go away. <laughs> so if I were you, I wouldn't worry about it. Everything's gonna be fine. I think there are other things to worry about like the fact that we have two candidates we don't like running to be president. Like the fact that for the last year we had a government in place and didn't pay attention to the government, did we? Because we were too busy saying, boy, I wonder who's going to win this. You know, and no, that's, you, you, no. That's the fucking problem. We have a government. The government didn't do anything. And if you fucking think, I don't think the trillions matter. Because what really matters is, is that you can sit there and go, what if he wins, what if she wins? And boy, boy, first off, people act 
Did people stop taking civics? Do you not get it? The president isn't like Caesar. Got it? The president of the United States, just because they say something, shit doesn't fucking happen. We just watched years of it. Shit doesn't occur because someone is elected president. Get a fucking grip. You can elect who you want. And what will happen is, if Hillary is elected, she'll nominate people to the Supreme Court. And the Republicans, they'll go, <laughs> Trump wins, he'll nominate people to the Supreme Court. And the Democrats go, <laughs> that's the way it works. There's, you know, that's, that's the fucking problem. That is why we remain in debt, because we're not doing anything. We have to do shit. We've got an infrastructure, except, you know, we've got an infrastructure that if you pray, and as a matter of fact, seriously, <laughs> now that I have, I've never told them, those who watch at home, uh, it's, you can pray potholes away. I read about it. I'm in Mississippi and the miracle was told to me here tonight. I think all of you tomorrow, the one thing that we could do to really help the country, since we won't fix the infrastructure with money, is to just get out there. Every pothole you see, drive to the side of the road. You and your family, I don't care how much traffic there is. Get out there and pray and pray and pray. And surely that pothole will go away. You know, just be, be run, run fast. Uh, Lewis, I was in Walmart uh, at the beginning of the month and they were already putting Christmas shit out. Holy fuck, it's not even Halloween yet. Put that shit up until after Thanksgiving. Well, they're not. They're not. It starts earlier and earlier every year. If it went, you know, we're, and we're, we're Cracker Barrel connoisseurs. Those of us who are on the tour bus with me, if there's a Cracker Barrel, we begin to weep and cry out, oh, fuck. Can we stop at the Cracker Barrel? Yes, we must stop at the Cracker Barrel. The only place that you can actually order what is the essence of a breakfast buffet. We will bring you every possible fucking breakfast meat on a plate. You won't have to get up. You won't have to get up. And so in the Cracker Barrel, fucking in August, they were already fucking shoveling that Christmas shit onto the shelves. Nobody, we, no, we fucking, why not? If we got a fucking election that goes on for a year, Christmas fucking should go for a year. Everything should go for a year. It's been Halloween since July 4th. I, what do I think of people tossing six live turkeys from an airplane in Yellville, Yellville, well, who the fuck lives in Yellville, Arkansas? But it sounds like a place I should move. Yellville! Six live turkeys from an airplane in Yellville, Arkansas for its annual turkey trot. Okay, look, uh, I, I don't even know what the fuck a turkey trot is. What the fuck is it? Do they don't, what, do they, what the fuck is it? Do you guys, well, I'm in Tunica, there's nothing here, there's no turkeys trotting. They got rid of the turkeys, you don't gamble. What's a turkey? Do they run with the turkeys? What the fuck? And it takes six of them? What the fuck is that about? I don't know what a turkey trot is. So you should fucking explain it. The next time write in and fucking explain what the fuck that is. Did somebody here write that? No, that, did you? Did you do, you did not. You're just looking for attention, you prick. Well, you would have answered the question. I'd like to hear your view on the obesity problem in America. Americans eat crap. A 750 calorie breakfast seems to be a normal part of our society now. Your thoughts? Cracker Barrel! Here are my, 
Here, here's my thought on the obesity problem, which made me wonder how crazy we're getting. I, I had a special that was on Comedy Central, and it was just on, and at least 10 people wrote on Facebook or whatever the fuck, or Farty Bo, or Snapchat, or ha ha, and boo boo. And they all said, God, you've lost a lot of weight. Are you okay? And I thought, all I could think was A, um, do, 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 have I looked like a big fat fuck? Because I kind of looked just normal. It was not like, a, you know, I was out there like, you know, I, I was kind of stunned. We, we, we don't seem to have, you don't have to be, I, it's just that concept that, well, you, you know, if you're losing weight, there's something wrong. It's called a diet. And I, I, it's not even a diet. I just, I'm, it, I'm, it's the worst thing you can do. I'm not eating bread. Do you know how painful it is to perform without bread in your system? Have any fucking idea? Every day, oh, we're gonna have a sandwich. Fuck you, fuck you and your sandwich. Son of a bitch. I'm gonna have a Cuban sandwich. God damn it, I love Cuban sandwiches. Turkey sandwiches, I used to eat 100 turkey sandwiches in a fucking year with mayo. You can't just go and fucking go and take a spoon and eat mayo. It's not right. It's not fucking right. Well, and this is this to give you an idea. This is this is uh, uh, Hungary uh, would accept your migration request for sure. I've I've basically said that there's a real possibility I'm out of here. Um, but now that I came up with the Jewy Jew concept, I'm not. Here's an idea, you should come and visit Hungary. The shit is so deep here, we don't even complain anymore. Or should we? So there's an option. For those of you who are not coming to Tunica, go to Hungary. For those of you, for you who are depressed by our $16 trillion debt, fucking get a plane ticket and go over there and see, shit can be deeper. Shit can be deeper. <laughs> Overpopulation. Are we just gonna keep popping out babies until there's no food left? Uh, well, I won't be around. So, you deal with that. I, and do I know, I don't know the answer. I'm, I don't know for, they're not, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know people who are popping them out, so. They're not, uh, usually it's a long process. They just don't, it's not like a, it's not like a toaster oven and you put in. You know, pumpkin spice everything, every autumn. Last night I sampled a public pumpkin spice martini. It was good. Fuck you. You, it's vodka or gin, and it should have an olive in it. Don't sully it with that goddamn. Did it have a chunk of pumpkin in it? Pumpkin spice has got to stop. It's not a spice. It's pumpkin. It's a gourd. It's a gourd. It's a foul-smelling from hell gourd. You open it up and go, holy fuck. This is what hell smells like. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Good night. Win in the casino. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.